Hello, this is the weekly jail and zones call. We have Santiago and Jamie and Michael, myself, and Dan Langel has just arrived. Uh, we are running through a bunch of open bug reports in preparation for a triage call tomorrow at the same time. So we've just gone through uh, Jamie's uh, jail descriptors idea, which has not yet hit the review stage. Uh, it looks like the dot include feature is making it into 14 and will have a small improvement before it ships. And we are discussing the escapes that are going on. So Jamie, you had mentioned something on perhaps second escape. Yes. There. Well, first on the first one, I consider that to be perhaps a foot gun that if you have two jails that can talk and if you set it up that they can talk via Unix domain sockets, uh, maybe you deserve what you get because that means that you have, well, it's just a jail with a sub jail though. So maybe you don't deserve it. I, I, I looked at the proposed fix and I wasn't happy with that because it affected things that weren't in jails. So yeah, that's, that's more complicated. The second one, I mean, it's, you set up a single jail with, with no mount and yeah, maybe no mount is a foot gun issue also, but I mean, people want no mounts and it's no mounting within the jail that should be safe. So that's something that's definitely in the area that I am going to have to look at myself. Okay. The first one, I don't know. It's, it's sort of a jail issue, sort of not. It probably needs a jail solution at least for the second one. Yeah. Boy, that's a mess. Understood. Dan, welcome. We are focusing on open issues and their triage. Do you have any that are at the top of your list? I have none of that. Lucky you. <laughs> I'm jealous. We might I, I do, go ahead. I do want to say though that what Crest suggested several weeks ago for me to get IPv6 working. Uh, in all my jails on a single host about moving all the IP addresses to the bridge works. I, I did it for one host and then I came across another host. I needed this on last night and using my notes, it, it went rather smoothly. There's a blog. I don't know if the blog post is out about it or not. Oh yeah, it is. It is. So that's a shout out to Jan. Yep. Excellent. And you mentioned all IPs. Is the host having a number of IPs? The host probably has 20 or 30 IP addresses, and they're all on bridge zero. There are none on the primary NIC into which the network cable is attached. Okay. And I was wondering, I assume one could support multiple bridges. How would one associate back? I suppose you'd have you'd then have to carefully choose a, a host member NIC per bridge and then follow the same pattern, thinking out loud here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, one of these hosts also has Beehive on it. Mm -hmm. uh, has Home Assistant running in a Beehive instance managed by the the VM package? I don't know if that that helps. You mentioned a few weeks back some potential issues. Have you resolved those? I did. Uh, I you remember. came to the table with. If I do a search, I'll probably find you. Uh, either Home Assistant or something related to it. I can't, I can't remember. Python issues, perhaps, or well, yes. other composers. That, that got fixed, and I wrote a blog post about it. I, oh. I, can't, I can't, can't remember. Oh, yes. It was, uh, yeah. Um, you have the post handy? I did write a blog post about it. Um, oh, as one does. Home Assistant. Yeah, it's... it's uh, the blog post is Home Assistant, moving from the HA Green Eye integration to HACS Green Eye Monitor. It's just a different um, integration that you use under Home Assistant 
the, uh, the the Home Assistant native package is is being slow to upgrade after Home Assistant uh, after Home Assistant went to a newer Python. But yeah, that that's resolved for me now. I think I found it. Cool. I will note the post here because hey, follow up is our friend. Great, thank you for that update. Let's see, where are we? 816. Um, Jan. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, is he here? He hasn't rolled in. He's he's a regular, but he must be tied up. But yeah, I will immortalize that here. Memorialize it. How's that for a proper way to say it? Uh, is fixed. Okay. So, uh, do you have anything else to run through, Dan? No. Cool. Nothing jail related. So, <laughs> with fourteen coming, uh, any issue that touches jail and virtualization would deserve some love. And maybe Santiago, you can paint that picture for us of what you're seeing on either Broadcom issues. I'm seeing lots of. AMD pass-through issues, SRIOV yeah. issues, <laughs> all the mm. things. Yeah, so, hi guys. So, hey. lately we've seen some issues with the Intel um, driver that is in ports. The one that is in kernel works fine. So you can create the SRIOVs without any problems and pass it through on Intel boxes. Uh, I mean, Intel CPUs. And then if you are using the, the, the driver from, from the ports, uh, that IOV doesn't work yeah, with the latest port. port. As soon as you create the, the virtual functions, uh, you get a kernel panic. Um, so we are working with one of the guys from Intel. He said that he was going to check on that one last week, I think. Um, but the issue is the already pinpoint. So I think it's just for Intel to add the line that checks if one of the, the variables is, is getting null and just returning. So I think that that one is easy to fix. Um, the other issue, I don't know if you have it there, but uh, yeah. I'll bring up that page. Yeah. So which one, no, that's what right. number was this one? Uh, that one was, no, no, don't, you don't have it there. Uh, oh, yes, that, no. <laughs> Pick one, there may be to choose from. Maybe it's an entirely different issue. If you've got a PR number, please, please. Yeah, there is a PR. That. Um, cool. Yeah, I will share it later, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, and then the other issue is on the Broadcom. The Broadcom is a bit more complicated because, yeah, the driver is completely broken in 13.2, and now people are still, are, sorry, are being, being hit by that, yeah, because especially PFSense, OpenSense, they are all upgrading to 13.2. Uh, and yeah, people are complaining about broken cards not working. Uh, that would you be cannot this... create any VLANs. Actually, I didn't get a PR there. Let's take a look together. Yeah. Uh, we are talking that issue. Um, yeah, that one. Correct. Okay. Yeah, this was after a patch from from Broadcom itself. Um, I think we identified the fix, or not the fix, a workaround, like four months ago. Uh, okay. But yeah, okay. nothing moved. And they released 13.2 with the bug, knowing that we have a bug. So that really annoys me, to be honest. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Is the workaround in uh, this, to your knowledge? Yes. I, I'm using, yeah. The, the, our host, our machines are running the, the patch. Uh, I think somebody there on the on the back report said this is like a shitty patch. I know, but okay. at least yeah. I can use my cards. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. yeah, we need somebody from Broadcom to take a look. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. 13.2, and you say that made its way into, say, PFSense and OpenSense and others? Yes, PFSense, they already happening, and oh, cool OpenSense, and yeah. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay, so is the discussion with Broadcom taking place actively? So for months, for months went radio silence, and then last week, uh, um, one of the guys, I think Patel is the last name, I think he he re he replied saying he was gonna fix it. Then he put a fix there. We tried with uh, somebody else from the list. I can't remember the name. Um, that he's always working on network, and it failed. So we reply back saying, "Hey, it doesn't work." And then one week passed and nothing. Radio silence again. Okay. It is indeed summer for them too, but yeah, uh, yeah. You know, wrong one. Okay. Is that a conversation you're driving or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... We, we follow up. I sent a, a reminder on, I think, on Monday. I want to give him some time. So I don't want to annoy him. So, sure. Yeah. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. Sorry for the background noise. I don't hear any. <laughs> oh, okay. Your noise Excellent. cancellation is working. So, yes. Uh, yeah. As an informed pair of boots on the ground, your your engagement of Broadcom is probably the most valuable thing here. Yeah. Uh, and if if those patches need to make it into review and be declared terrible patches, but waiting on new ones, well, let, let's see. Yeah. yeah. So, is anything else oh. pressing, Santiago? Yeah, so my, my patch only reverts what Broadcom did, nothing else. So it, it's not that bad, the patch. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not a, yeah. So well, that simply reverts there. Yeah, one of the parts of the changes. Yeah. Okay. So John, you've got about 10 minutes. Let's uh, get dirty here. So we are running through all the many Broadcom NIC, Intel NIC, AMD pass-through, and SRIOV issues are any at the top of your list. Hopefully I've captured them here, but I'm having this call to get your boots on the ground facts. Sorry, uh, Michael, I think that yes. that one that you are showing 2709966, if I'm seeing it right, yes. that's also related or that is similar to the one I'm having. It seems to be happening on happening on all I AMD boxes, yeah. So as oh, in, as soon I as didn't you hear your answer. Are you running AMD boxes? Yeah, it happens on all AMD. Yeah, and and you have them in the lab, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, I okay, have them in the lab. that's good available. to know. Yes, and um, as soon as you do PCI pass through, all the devices get bricked. Yeah, like networks, uh, uh, network card stops working. Um, sometimes MBMEs, they stop replying, and of course, you have timeout, and then the system reboots. So, yeah, it seems to be happening all around AMDs. Yeah, okay. Do we know if that landed at any specific time? Because there must be a pretty clear point of regression. Look, I was using it in 13.1. I'm pretty sure I was doing PCI pass through all the time with those. Uh, okay. From one day to another one, start failing. Yeah, so I guess they are in 13.2. Now I can revert back and test. There, now Okay, so stops working right off the bat for you. Oops. Let's see. Sorry, Michael, can, can you repeat? You're having this problem, they're having it after a, a point of a point, uh, an amount of time, but are you having it just not work at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Similar errors? The same error. Same error. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and you're not alone. I've copied out some select <laughs> yeah. comments here. Like, okay, guys, yeah. can we please have this working? Yes. Yes. Seeing this issue. Okay, I will spin up some AMD hardware as soon as today and just, yeah, get okay. documented what I can because I've been slacking on that, but... I can provide also access to the machine. I already awesome. prepared everything to give you access. So whenever you just ping me your IP address cool. um, and a key, and that's it. I can give you access. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, John, I know you're time limited. SRIOV, is that biting you? Um, no, the only thing, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. 
Uh, the only thing really getting me is the is the uh, thing we've discussed, which is following the, the Mac following a VM. I also did just post something that has been in my notes for a while. Um, the default IXL driver that comes with FreeBSD, I believe, if you look at netstat-i output, the counts are bad. They're like they're off by a, a eight bits or 16 bits. Um, and if I download and build the IXL driver from the Intel site, the counts are correct. Okay. Yeah, I can play it. Stat drivers on And so what version of FreeBSD? 13.2? Uh, I'm using 13 stable. Okay. I'm sure it goes back at least a little ways. And you said they look like they're off by eight bits or something? Yeah, it looks, you know, you would, in the past, I would have said maybe it was an Endian problem, but I, I haven't, I honestly have not looked at this. I just build the other driver. Uh, with profound irony, Santiago, did you just say that the, your, the in-base driver is okay, but the one imports is a problem? I think I've highlighted that here. For uh, Intel, yes. Okay. So, John, is there a PR to your knowledge of that? Uh, I don't know, and I only did a cursory search, and okay. that was a while back. I'm sorry. No, that's that's why we're talking. Is like, let's get one in motion if it's not there already. <laughs> um, let's investigate. And then... Did you do any more investigation into the MAC address following VMs around different hosts when they are SRIOV passed through? And I say that because, well, you definitely know networking code. And if it's a relatively trivial feature, let's explore what can and can't be done with it. Um, the answer is I've only looked into it a very small amount. And that was probably what when that email went out about a year ago. Um, actually, we've been poking at the live manifest stuff, which has a slightly higher priority for us. Uh, tell us, oh, here we go, this feature. Um, well, I'll encourage you to investigate that if you do have any capacity, just because it's, it sure. might be simpler than it than we're fearing. Uh, tell us more about, did you say live NFS or something else NFS? Yeah, I've been poking at the live NFS as a uh, as a uh, back end for a, a PCI disk device. Live, L-I-B. Thank you. Oh, right. Uh, I know what you're talking about. And I did run that by Chuck. Um, uh, yes, so what stage are you at with that? And I'll gladly explain what the opportunity is. We are, I currently have it uh, mounting uh, and statting and attaching the device. I don't have any IO going to it yet. On current or stable? On 13, um, 13 to stable. Okay. So and go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just want to explain to the group that, as I understand it, uh, you are matching the QEMU libNFS network share uh, network client such that the VM itself can reach out to an, an NFS server yes. and its storage such that you're not joining the dozen other mounts on the host so that you bypass the host connection. This, this will, yeah, this network. allows... This allows the hypervisor to not have to mount any uh, any NFS mounts at all. Well, the host, correct. The host hypervisor, shall the, we the, Right, the hypervisor. The VM is, is where it has the mounts. Yep. Or the, the, the Beehive the Beehive application owns the mounts. Yep. But if we get a lockup, it doesn't lock up the entire host. Great. Uh, so Chuck was definitely curious and working to decide if that's the most brilliant or least brilliant thing in history, but he's totally open-minded. So uh, feel free to reach out to me and Chuck. 
you know, get you in touch as appropriate. But um, uh, that's that is in, that was definitely interesting because uh, people have wanted to be unobtrusive with their VMs to a fault, and that's how we got into this bridging situation that's finally getting to the attention it deserves. But the idea that, say, the VM is making that NFS connection without bothering the host is quite attractive. So lock up the host. Any other comments on that? And is that something um, you think could be wrapped up for 14 or is that just way too early days of feature? Oh, I. it depends on what other people think. Okay, well, let's have that conversation and uh, I'll introduce you to Chuck if you like. Yeah, I am sending you a, 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 a chat message right Great. here. Great. Let me see if this will help. Did you get that? I did. Thank you, sir. Okay. That's your draft that's syntax? A, it's a sample syntax. Great. Okay. Love it. I'm not even trying yeah. to do the config file stuff yet. Uh, is there anyone else who could could use such a feature? Oh, I have no other, idea. Other, yeah, that's why I'm asking. Hey, like, uh, although this is a beehive topic on a jail call, but heck, thank you for voicing that early. Yeah, I'll well, you ask. Sorry. With 14. <laughs> oh, hey. Ah, uh, let's look at jail issues. Uh, Antrenik. Oh, we lost Antrenik. He came. He went. Um, but he had some easily jail-specific issues with the uh, detrace net examples not working. So I don't know if he... Let me ping him separately. because He was planning to test that. Uh, did he get... And he had a workaround, but it was like the library names were changed path or something simple. So... I'll find you. Net. Uh, okay, so there's that. What else? This was not a thing. Uh, I was also hoping to ask him about the uh, jail.conf.d relationship. And Jamie, I don't know if you have any. Uh, comments, observations, opinions on jail.conf.d, but John McGurney reached out just this last two days on what's the question? Let's see. Sorry to bug you. It current doesn't ship with a configuration that supports jail.conf.d, despite being mentioned in the manual page. Da, 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 da. Um, What's the holdup? So, Jamie, my question to you, do you recall the status of that original work, which predated the dot .include work? Um, yeah, I'm going to look at that right now. And there were very much, let me show you here, I think in this list, maybe, uh, jail.conf.d where Eluria was going to jump in on that. Because I think Antrenig had a motivation to make that work for his uses. Depend parameter does not work on modular jail files. Oh, so the interdependence, that's one thing. That sounds like dot .include resolves it. But so I'm not clear on what remains as open issues. So Jamie, if you have some thoughts, great. If not, we'll move on. Um, look, I'm looking at oh. where it got put in. Okay, the commit was... Just a commit of jail.conf.5 list configuration and example files. So it listed a the um, 
jail.conf.5 has a sample configuration that includes the uh, includes the conf.d files, and then it mentioned the conf.d files in the section of files of interest. So it kind of implies that jail looks at them, but really it's just a relisting of the examples section. So probably should be taken out of the files section, especially since the examples section is later on. But is the underlying and feature and not quite working and shouldn't either should who, be fixed or uh, not put there that at in, all? So could ask about that. Okay. If I'm pronouncing the name even close to correctly, which I'm probably not. That's okay. Is it the same review or a different review? Oh, hold on. Um, did I see review? Just a second here. I mean, bug them. I mean, bug. No, there was no review listed in that commit. Uh, do you have that commit uh, URL, by the way? Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, look at CCEE95DF. Okay, I hope I got that right. No. Okay. EE, -E, not 3-3. E -E. Hey, it's leak speed. EE, CCEE? CCEE95DF. -E 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 okay, so if someone could expand that, great. That's where Jan is amazing. <laughs> so as we go and look at that, uh, we either have a documentation bug, a jail.conf.d bug, or both. Um, is that an accurate summary? I'm sorry, I was still uh, looking at that commit. What's that question? Oh, just in review, we either have a jail to conf debug or a documentation bug or both, correct? Um, yeah, I, I okay. suspect documentation. Got it. Um, go ahead and expand that if easy, because I have another documentation question. Actually, I'll jump in there now. Um. So, Jamie, when you free up, I know we together dissected the manual page just for the first header of it. Do you know if any movement took place relating to it? Sorry for this. Here we go. Yes, I do know. No movement at all. Okay. Um, is there any, are there any low-hanging fruit deletions or movements of text in the existing page that would be wise for 14? I just I mean I, I completely dropped that one so probably. Okay. Uh, um, do you have yeah, the... yeah, I haven't even looked at that issue. I knew it was there, but uh it's one of those things that has just kind of fallen off. Is it able to fall back on the truck? <laughs> Uh, can I send a care package or something to, to <laughs> in there? So anyway, uh, let's just throw it on there. Uh, I know Dave is tied up with family issues and cannot assist, but if if there are simple rearrangements of that page, let's do it. It's not that's not uh, something requiring heavy uh, regression testing in the build server. Right. So. Uh, I'll just put that as all. Oh, uh, what love can we give to the page? So, just to have it documented, uh, did you find anyone find a URL for that commit, or shall I just try a see git commit and slam it in there and see if it works? Okay. Other jail PRs. Oh, there we go. I'll, I'll move that over because we've discussed it. 
and it's documented for posterity. Okay, there. Okay. So we want 14 to have the best jail experience in human history. So let's just see what we can do with the resources we have. SRIOV, we won't touch on today. Um, I believe Dave posted jail examples. I don't know if that's of exciting priority to anyone present, but um, if anything, let's see if his work is ready to go. Ba, 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 ba. Work in progress examples of jail's functionality from last month. Acknowledged. Godspeed, Dave. If anyone wants to assist, fantastic, but I understand the limitations. And that was this question of the manual page update. So we got that covered. That is a beehive question, beehive question, beehive question. Go yawn, wire guard. Do, do, do. Beehive, beehive. Uh, let's take a look at this one. It is, a, 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 as I as I did my homework and housekeeping, uh, I found that we have a number of issues. Oh, I punched into a window. This might be Jan and Daniel territory, but let's take a look. Tab. So, Jail cannot assign link global IBV6 address to jail. Let's see, this was reported 2016, but updated last month. So Felder reported this. Oh, the update might be Jamie, you're on there. Okay. Yeah. So are you, do you recall this ticket? Yeah, there, there's a uh, hack that, that you can do to uh, get that link local address in based on knowledge of how the um interface number i think is encoded into part of the address it's uh it's a um encoding that's all within the kernel and the problem is it sounds like the uh, jail user space program would have to match the kernel and hopefully that encoding doesn't change which probably would be the case I mean, the, the right solution is to go back to the uh, IPv6 early committee meetings and say, what were you thinking putting interface names as part of an IP address? But it's right. probably a little late for that. Yeah. Do you recall the location of that workaround? No. And it might, in fact, be in the right place, which would be that ticket. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think it was, it was I didn't uh, ever mention what it was. I think I just mentioned, oh, yes, there is something there that or someone else mentioned there is something there that does that in the kernel and we could use that same address. And it, and it does seem to work. You present an, at an address that actually has that already put in and the kernel accepts it and then reports it back as, oh yeah, this is a link local address. The so, tricky part is that means that at that point, I need to not only uh, parse the addresses with the available library routines, but also then look up the interface name with whatever code that probably if config has for looking up interface names and Munge the address, and this is something that definitely is not in uh, standard library routines for uh, text to binary IP6 address conversions. Uh, you use the technical term munging. What and what's a way to describe what would have to happen? Um, that's the encoding of the interface name within the address. Okay, so I've covered that so far. Yes, Munch. It's a, a very 
useful word that covers a lot of bases. Awesome. Then that said, let's, while I've got you, let's jump ahead to this one that has been biting various folks for eternity. Uh, PID file, no, PID one, there we go. Let's go there. So I've had this conversation a few times this week. A bunch of us want to run NextCloud in a jail. And this is a personal, an issue that even bites Docker folks, et cetera. System D aggressively wants to use PID one. And well, every Unix system has typically a PID zero and a PID one, thank you very much. And Lumos has made a workaround where they can indeed renumber the PIDs. So Jamie, way, way hypothetically, would there be a way for say jail PIDs to start at zero or one or a custom layout based on something from the user? Um, Bjorn Sape has uh, made his own uh, differential somewhere where he was working on a complete uh, PID namespace for jails, um, but that includes such things as the PID is not even being visible from parent jails because they're using different numbers. Uh, barring that, which has its own advantages and disadvantages and is also, you know, clearly not ready yet because he hasn't, I, th I think he's mentioned it's gone stale, but uh, it might be possible to have a jail with just a PID one to create a virtual init process in a jail. I I know it's it can be done because this is something that I had done in a past life that was had got me into jails when I was uh, working at a web hosting company that where we had jail like containers and it included that feature. It would uh, be very different than the way jails currently run and it would have to be a separately enabled feature. And once again, it would be uh, definitely too late for 14 because I don't know, it doesn't quite count as kernel ABI change because it doesn't change the actual ABI, but it's a, a new behavior at least and probably not the kind of thing they're looking to add this close before the release. Understood for what it's worth. He's, oh, he's got a lot of clothes. Good, good man. I'm searching for BZ and open. Do you recall anything about that review? A um, word. It's been at least a year since uh, he had mentioned it to me. So I don't know if it has oh, had here we go. Here are some anything candidates. for a while. Okay. Uh, process there you space go. virtualization. That sounds like it. Yeah. Okay. Have a process zero swapper per jail. Okay. Yep. It's own pit, et cetera. Space if enabled. Obtained from, okay. From is a sponsored by IX. Good. Uh, perhaps it's a hoster you worked at in a previous life. H seven H E. Anyway. No, no, the, That's the your uh, comment, Scott. Company I worked for was Vario. I believe it doesn't oh. even exist anymore. Okay. Understood. So that said, last. Tickled 2019. Um, oh, yeah, definitely more than a year. <laughs> well, let's try to interpret where this went off the rails. Let's see. Some few situations. You made some comments, subscribers, merge branch. Okay, merge, thank you. Yeah. Uh, to your knowledge, does this address the issue? at hand it um it would address the issue at hand but i do not know at what cost you know because of the inability to look at a jail's processes from outside the jail that would open up new issues beautifully put um let me document it first in just a second here i think the point of what bjorn was trying to do with this is he has a longer term goal of being able to live port jails between hosts. And I think that was part of that, which is probably why it didn't go anywhere because without 
that, then, you know, it's, it might have too much cost to be useful. And that's, you know, that's a, that would be a huge thing to add, but I, it, you know, takes a lot of moving parts. Yes, sir. So hypothetically, a host could not see PIDs of a jail, suddenly eliminating the panopticon. You mentioned a comment of the, the can of worms here. Not see PIDs of the jail. Uh, lots to consider. Okay. That fact alone is uh, huge, encouraging progress. Thank you. So, uh, other just quality issues, 14 release issues, nice stories to share as users. Anything else at this time? I would love, I haven't heard back from Antonig. I guess he's tied up and can't. Is anyone else familiar with the fact that the D-Trace network probes on previous current are not working? Never it's actually used D-Trace. <laughs> Understood. Okay. Uh, Dan, Santiago, while we have you, while we have you, anything else? Not from my side. Okay. It's fascinating that one user is fine with the in-base Intel driver. Another is relying on the port. So <laughs> those are contradictory, unfortunately. Yeah. You, you know, Michael, something that will be nice to, to outline or put somewhere, what's the difference between the two drivers at the moment? What are the benefits of using the ports? So we can focus on one instead of having like users work using one. Um, I don't know what are the, the difference, to be honest, between that. Uh, shall we assume the latest and greatest is in ports and it trickles down slowly to base, sometimes with its own special set of bugs? Okay. Uh, like graphics drivers, maybe, which have been pushed entirely to ports for better yeah. or worse. Yeah, I'm not, not sure, to be honest. I don't know what's... Okay. what's That's uh, a valid question. Let's, let me document it. Uh, and back in. Uh, it's, it's almost like, well, what guarantees do they make or not make? Um, that was some excellent coverage. And if the Jamies of the world can take your remaining time of the day to do this simple uh, thing as looking at the, just the making the manual page a little more human friendly, then hey, that's appreciated. Um, oh, let's chase down that commit, if not too difficult. I will do a quick search here so you get. Uh, log. I will try a cheat. Does the URL support the abbreviated ones? Yes. Hello, it worked. Goodness. Okay. okay. Ha! What do you know? You can just click on oh, a okay. random commit, drop in the, the hash, and off you go. So let me get this actually visible here. So, um, Okay. The crime was perhaps committed here. Yep. <laughs> and a, yeah, you can see that's a, a very small commit. Gun. All it does is just add the files. Okay. So are the other lines still valid or or it, should the entire commit perhaps be reverted? Or can we simply say, hey, let's remove this? Where is that here? There we go. Oh. Let's see. Should not include that. Yeah, the <laughs> jail.star.com file. I don't know. So much of uh, what jail files are used is part of rc.d, which is not my code, the rc.g jails script. Okay. I can soften my language, so um, oh, not. Yeah. okay. For that matter, um, 
jail.conf.d stuff is in rc.d slash jail. So it's, it's not used in the jail command, but it is used in the jail system as people see it. Okay. Are, yeah. So I look at it and what you need is those files are not looked at altogether. They are looked at for jails that are in the RC configuration list of jails to start. And it's part of the confusion of what is done by RC and what is done by jail eight. Does that mean we're perhaps good? And this conversation was... I think we're good. Misled. And um, it is just a matter of uh, user education, which I guess right points right back to documentation. <laughs> Fair enough. So what would we tell John, John Mark? We'd say, hey, did you try it? Because it should be working or... It, it depends on what it is. If he yeah. says, oh, you know, I ran jail dash C whatever jail name and it did not start the jail because the jail was in that directory. Well, that's behavior as described in every part of the man page except the list of files. But it's kind of implied in the list of files that that should work. Ah, yeah, okay. So it still might not be either shouldn't be in the man page or we need some section in the man page that mentions what the RC file does, or is that a different man page? You know, that's uh, it gets a little hairy there as to exactly what, where that clarification should sure. be. Okay. Hey, that, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm good. We covered a lot of key ground right there. Thank you. Like Bjorn Zeep's work being on our radar. Thank you. Uh, anything else, everyone? Or shall we all get back to work on this, these types of things? I'll respond to John Mark shortly after this. Uh, don't uh, 11 o'clock exactly Pacific. Well, then don't tempt me. I'm going to say, hey, great work. I'll stick around a few minutes. And that was extremely productive. Thank you. And there will be a deeper triage call tomorrow, which might be a bunch of a bunch of SRIOV issues. So there's that. So there's that. So would that be 21? No, that would be like what time? Did you see? I'll, I'll figure that out. Uh, and, oh, time. 1800. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Stay cool. Right. It's yeah. extremely warm here. <laughs> uh, yes, here too. Awesome. Bye. -bye.